Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So uh, I'm James Rowlands. I'm Director of Engineering at Anaplan. For those of you who don't know, Anaplan is a planning software, um, kind of in the name. And it's um, aimed at sort of enterprise level organizations and allows them to do sort of complicated financial planning and operational planning, and it's used sort of by very large organizations. Um, but I'm going to talk to, us, talk to you about how we, can use, how we are using AI and how you can use AI to improve your developer productivity and how you can take those lessons and apply it to improving your customers' lives as well. So, so um, I'm going to talk to you about ChatGPT. I'm going to talk to you about Copilot. I'm going to talk to you about the risks of using those things. And then I'm going to talk to you about how you can take those lessons and apply them to your customers. And then we'll have time for questions. So how can we use AI to improve our developer productivity? What are the risks and how can we do it safely? So let's start the dangerous bit. <laughs> ChatGPT gives us the opportunity to get it to write us something that would take me maybe three hours of trawling through Stack Overflow and trying to force something together that eventually I get to work. But so, for instance, let me just write here. Um, please, because I'm a very polite person, <laughs> write me a bash, I'm going to be specific, bash script to rsync between two file stores. Now, fingers crossed. Um, as I said, this is the kind of thing that would take me half an hour or take me getting a C a SRE's time or getting a senior engineer's time to help me write something. And this is obviously a contrived example, but you could use this with a Python script, you could use this with Rust, you could do this with anything, but you're trying to write something that you don't know particularly well about. And in the time that it's taken me to witter on a little bit, it's written a script and it started telling me how to use it. So that saved me a lot of time. And there's risks here, right? And so the risk here is that this has misinterpreted what I want and it's written something that would do something very bad. But the upside is it's taken one minute. And so providing we're getting this stuff reviewed by people who know what they're doing, which is not me in the case of Bash, um, this has really increased our time to actually getting some value out of this. Now let's say I did know Bash and I wanted to improve a script that I'd already written. So I might say, um, please take the above script and um, add a retry. And so this is showing that if you know, if, like you can use ChatGPT to augment what you already know and to add improvements to it. Now, once again, I could have spent an awful long time on Stack Overflow or pestering somebody and saying, does this look right? Because it's, it's always the if statements in Bash that <laughs> screw me over. So in the time that it's taken, you know, let's say five minutes, we've got some quite complicated Bash script here. And Hopefully it would work if we ran it. But what my point is that this allows us to sort of get to value faster, allows us to use less of our peers' time. So I can get ChatGPT to write this and I can get somebody to review it rather than me having to get somebody else to help me write it, then get somebody else to review it. And so we're just saving time and we're saving and we're massively reducing the context switching that we force other people to do by helping us with this stuff. And so this is a very contrived example because you probably wouldn't get a bash script to do this. But let's say we had this was an API call and I wanted to improve this even more. And I might say, um, add an exponent, oh, sorry. Swap the retry policy for an exponential back off. Can't spell. Can't. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't need me to. And that's taking a relatively generic, no, sorry, not, not a, a particularly terse way of asking it to do something. And it's taking it and being very specific about the output. And so we can be much more terse with it and we can say, you know, I want it in this language or I would like it to do this particular thing. But it just really opens up time for developers focusing on the complicated things and saying, well, this is how I do the simple thing. Here we go. Now, how do I connect that into the wider system, the wider domain? 
and how do I build that up into the more complicated systems that we want to build. So, some of the other cool stuff about ChatGPT. So, uh, I'm going to get uh, settings. Here we go. So, it can I, I can give it context about myself. I can give it context about how I want it to respond. So I could say to I could put in here, respond as though you're an expert. Respond as though you're a mentor. I'm a Rust engineer, so always respond in Rust. Or these are the languages I use, and so it will understand that context without me even having to write it, and it will respond in that way. And so we can teach it about ourselves, which kind of took me back to what Sarah was saying around telling new starters or people who are working with you about yourself. And you, well, we can tell ChatGPT about ourselves, and it understands things about us, and then responds in the way that we want it to. So let's go to the second bit of dangerous live coding. <laughs> so here I've got a really small data structure, which is written in Python and is effectively the structure for an epic and some stories. Now, I'm, I've logged into my Copilot account and it's looking at this file. And so I put a comment here. It's taken the context around this being an epic and what that and everything that that means and said, well, would you like a description on this data structure? Sure, why not? And then what else might I want? I might want points. So it's taking the context of what it can read and it's trying to infer more information around that. So let's say, let's allow it to just do this for all the stories. And then let's see what else it can understand if I'm a little bit more specific about what I would like. So, if I now tell it to, so I'm gonna, rather than it just asking what it, letting it suggest something, I'm gonna try and tell it what I would like it to do. So if I say, print, um, print the epics, and their stories. So, right, let's hope this compiles. <laughs> well, not compiles, but runs. So there we go, we've got all of our epics and all of our stories, and that's, that, I, I could have probably written that myself, but it's written it for me and it's written it very, very quickly. What if I ask it to do something a little bit more complicated? So, um, print the epics and the sum of the unfinished stories. It's thinking, there we go, and right, let's test it. Now I need to double check. Um, <laughs> Yes, that looks right. <laughs> and so it's understanding from like relatively, not, not especially terse commands from me, but and it's understanding what's the data that's there and what I'm asking it to do. And it's doing it very, very quickly. Now, the risks here are that it's doing something that I might not understand if it's a language I don't understand. And it's doing it, and. We can also ask ChatGPT to write the tests for us. Now, in that case, we're really asking it to mark its own homework. And that's where a lot of the risk is in this, that if we are using this tool to write stuff that we don't understand ourselves, then we're at risk of it doing its own thing. Um, and so we've got to be very, very careful about making sure this is all peer reviewed. We've got to be very careful about making sure that, um, you know, we should probably be writing the tests if it's writing the code, or if we are, it is writing the tests, making sure we're reviewing that as well. But what this does enable people to do is that it allows people to write the boilerplate, boilerplate code very, very, sorry. <laughs> it allows people to write the boilerplate code very, very quickly, and then it allows them to focus on the difficult bits, which are, the, you know, how do we consider this in a system? How do we consider this as part of a broader domain? And so, we can use this to sort of allow our senior engineers and all of our engineers to just multiply their productivity. So like I can put together all of this, all the functions very, very quickly. And then I can think about how these, um, 
all need to connect together. And that allows engineers to focus on the more complicated problems rather than the just let's write this small function. So here we're using a large language model which has been trained on, in the case of ChatGPT, everything in GitHub. Now, if people have put their IP into GitHub, we could be consuming that IP and utilizing it for our own means. And that could open us up to being sued. Uh, there's an example with ChatGPT where it's read all of the Game of Thrones novels and has now written a prequel to George R. R. Martin's books called The Dawn of Direwolves, and he's now suing them because of it. The other example is that we are potentially allowing our IP to be read and other people could use our IP. So it's very, very important that we start thinking about this as this is a very powerful tool, but we need to make sure that developers are educated in how they use this and the risks around using it and what they're actually potentially giving away by using it. It kind of takes me back to when, you know, social media first became a big thing and people would say, you know, there was the old adage that if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. And in some respects, that's kind of true here, that you're giving your data to these large language models for their benefits. It benefits you as well, but it's also benefiting them. So how much can we boost developer productivity? So McKinsey very helpfully have done some studies on this, and they're saying that during the most complex tasks, you know, 25 to 30% improvement on delivery. During the least complex tasks, it's a relatively negligible difference. I mean, I could have written that small script, so you know, if I can write it, then it's not gonna make a big difference. But the big thing that it does improve is developer happiness. And so we're seeing that developers are significantly happier when they're using AI, that they feel like that they are doing more, their more meaningful work, and then that they're also feeling more in a flow state and they're not getting, having to do much, as much context switching, they're not having to sort of switch over to, um, you know, asynchronously ask questions of people about things they're trying to answer. They can go, they can, you know, chat GPT or Copilot will answer it for them. And it's acting as a mentor to them that previously they were having to use other engineers for. So how can we apply these lessons to customer productivity. So can we be building chatbots and interactive facts on, based on our documentation, our confluence pages? Um, can we be using them as mentors and guides? So Anaplan is a planning software, but it's based on models. And in the way that I asked ChatGPT around, help me build this um, bash script, if somebody could say, oh, I need to build this model, can you help me augment it in this way? And that would be, so that's sort of the kind of areas that we're looking at how you can um, improve time to value for our customers by saying, using AI to generate models for them or augment models for them, um, using it to spot anomalies in data and um, in model design, and then also, um, allowing customers to query their data without having to go through the UI and without having to understand the product. So I'm a CFO of a company and I want to see the financials for FY22. Can I just ask that question rather than having to sort of dive into some software that I don't really understand and have to pull out the data or export it myself? So I feel like the tools that we're using to improve our developers' lives, we can also use to improve our customers' lives and I think that that's gonna be a really powerful thing going forward in the industry. And thank you.